All right, so this weekend was Brussels Classic and it was won by the break. And I think it was quite interesting to go through the power as well as the tactics that the break employed because in reality, it should have realistically been a sprint, but the break played it well and they were actually super strong. So we'll look at the parkour here. So it goes around Belgium. It's a bit, um, we'll go back to here, sorry. It's a bit like not accurate because there's this massive bit from 50 to 150 meters, which blunts all the other climbs. It is relatively like not flat, um, but it's also obviously not mountainous. So you can see 470 meters and 200K. I'm not sure how accurate that is to be honest, um, but his gets 500, so maybe it is accurate. But anyway, so in terms of the numbers for the day, 312 normals for five hours for um, he was the wielder and Timo Wellems did again, 310 normalized. So I guess you can assume if you look at the size of him here, uh, he must be quite similar as well. So a hard day, but nothing absolutely bonkers. I also don't think the elevation is right. I think all the GVS units got ruined by the rain because if you're going up the mule, that's probably like 80 meters alone. So seems seems not potentially not believable. Um, but anyway, so we'll ha we can have a look at some of the power data early on, um, what it took to get in the break. So you can see there's some decent numbers here. But if we actually look at his like peak one minute, which came on very early, um, this is on uh, the Wavestern Weg. Um, sorry, my Dutch and slash Flemish pronunciation is horrendous. There's an overriser. Um, and again, I think this is a cobbled section. Um, and you can see here, sort of big, big watts trying to get in the break. We look at the heart rate here again. You can see uh, early on, um, very stressful. 380 normalized for 25 minutes is definitely hard. The racing was really on. You can see him jumping and moves, trying to get in it and then recovering in the peloton. But eventually the break did go. The break went, I believe, around here. Again, there wasn't live coverage necessarily, but you can also see um, from Timo Wellens, who finished second, his was a similar amount. He might have gotten the break slightly earlier because you can see his heart rate is more pinned for, throughout. Um, and again, 380 normalized for 23 minutes, trying to just get the advantage as large as possible. And then you can see it actually gets quite chill. So if we look at this, the next hour, it was suddenly down to 256 normalized. They know, okay, we got the break. There's no need to go too hard. And this is the thing that you'll see often with breaks is that actually this bit here, sort of the first hour to two hours of the break, like after it's really gone hard, is actually not too hard. Like it wouldn't be that hard to pull turns in this, to be honest, um, because there's no point going hard because realistically they've got the gap. They need to save it for the final because when the peloton starts to bring them back, that's when they need to hit it. If they hit it now, the peloton will just ride really hard and then they run out of gas because obviously the peloton's stronger. But instead, if they can keep the gap about the same as what they made out to, the peloton will be like, oh, they're just having a soft day. We don't want to bring them back too early, so we'll just let them go out. But actually, they're saving a lot of gas. And you can see it then starts to ramp up significantly more. If we look at the second half of the race, it's then 43K an hour, but 330 normalized. And again here, if we go from like 100 to 200K, you can see it's really ramped up again for Timo Wellams. Not quite as much, but you, you'll, you'll see that again. Um, and one way to show this is actually if we look at the peak normalized power, um, which obviously, you know, normalized isn't always the best thing to look at. But if we look at the 350, it was the last hour. So you can see there went 47K an hour for the last... The last hour or so, which is obviously the hardest part, and you can see here the, the turns they're pulling. So it's sort of like here it was a hard section where it's like 313 watts. I think this might have been um, on some of these were on some cobbled sections as well. And you can see there was a climb here as well, um, which was the Ross Weg. And again, like nothing absolutely bonkers in terms of numbers, but like, you know, just hard all day, heart rate quite high, 350 watts for, for 13 minutes. But we're going to go into the final. So Timo Wellams who we're with now, he actually he actually faked cramp when he got into the final. So last 15K, you can see 49K now, that is hard to bring back. So you can see here, he was he was going into the final and it was about here, he actually swapped, he actually put Mr. Turn um, and he was really trying to save as much watts as possible. He then sprinted back on um, and then going around this corner, Taco Vanderhorn launched it um, and actually ca caused a gap. So you can see this acceleration here was was Timo Wellens realizing that there was a gap and that he had to get across. So again, you can see 800 watts for 30 seconds. Now that is, at the end of a race, is, is very, very strong. And then after that, he then obviously freewheeled for a little bit and then hit it again. And to be honest, he almost stayed away. It was only like 500 watts for this part, which again, isn't that impressive, but the 800 watts to close the gap was big. And I think it was clever by him going straight over um, because what it meant was that 
Teco van der Horn then had to pull to then attack to get up to speed. Well, I think if he had in the sprint, Teco van der Horn would have been more fresh. But again, you can see like here, it's just, it was a real race of attrition. 1% uphill, 535 watts. Again, peak power here, one minute was 663, which was the last minute. So it included the big attack here, followed by the rest. And I mean, that is a big effort, but I think that was the issue. If, he'd, if he hadn't have had to go so early and hadn't had to have made that big attack out the corner to follow Taka Van Horn, because he had to come past a lot of people. Like when he went out the corner, he was like, oh yeah, you can see here, he like sprinted out the corner, then had a little bit like, oh, okay, do I need to go? And then was like, yeah, I do actually need to go. And then had to back up to 900 watts to get across the gap, which really tired him out. Um, and again, you can see the last five minutes, the hardest five minutes though was actually at the beginning, 406 watts. Um, but most of the real peak power does come towards the end, like 500 watts, the last two minutes is very, very hard. And you can see here, he's trying to, this bit here, trying to soft tap as much as possible. Um, going into the finish but yeah the breakaway played it calm they were basically very chill early on they really hooned it at the end um, and you can see that by the heart rates as well which is always interesting to see um, but yeah the break stayed away big win from Taco Van Horn uh, and anyway cheers for watching hope you did enjoy and I'll see you in the next one